Yes, you're still waiting for the vlogs that are in Australia, Bali and Singapore. They're, they're coming starting tomorrow. But right now I just wanted to talk about the Dubai Fitness Championships for the second day in a row. But it's completely over now and we have the first athletes and the first team going to the CrossFit Games. Whoa! Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Incredible. Before we get into that, like I just wanted to cover a few little bit. Um, no, actually, no, you know what? I'm going to talk about it now because I feel like I should talk about it now. If you haven't already seen the news or if you haven't caught up on the Dubai Fitness Championships, for the ladies, Sam Briggs. She had a one point lead over Jamie Green going into the final event. The final event was very gymnastic y, so that's pretty good for Jamie Green, but that's also pretty good for Sam Briggs. Honestly, Jamie Green and Sam Briggs were kind of like head to head for the whole event. I do not want to spoil it right now, so if you haven't watched it, I'll link the stream down below, just go through it and you'll find it. Co cover your ears if you don't want to listen to it. But basically, when they got to the heavy wall balls, the two sets of 30 heavy wall balls into five cleans. Sam Briggs could just hold on a little bit longer and actually went on to finish the event and be the only lady to finish the event. So just a really stylish way to finish off the Dubai Fitness Championships, not only winning the final event, but also, but also being the only lady to do so out of the whole field. As we all know, this year has been kind of one of those years for Sam Briggs where she had the elbow injury and then she missed, she missed regionals due to it and then had to go into the Masters. Finished second overall in the Masters even though she won the majority of the events just she couldn't catch up from the first day's setbacks. So I'm actually super excited to see her going back to the CrossFit Games previous champion 2012. The engine from England, super proud. It's almost incredible. She's a, she's, she can be a Masters athlete but she keeps going back as an individual because she can as we saw this weekend, she can hang with the with the girls. There was a quality field of Jamie Green, Sarah Sigmund's daughter, Laura Horvath, unfortunately had to pull out. We'll cover that in a second. Camilla Solomon Hellman. So she didn't just kind of cruise away into it. So what is Sam Briggs gonna do now? Here's her answer. Uh, I'll probably have a little bit of an off season. Um, just try and like concentrate on a few uh, weaknesses, try try get this elbow stronger. Uh, I'm still gonna do the Australian one, all the flights are, are booked, but I can take the pressure off myself and, and actually just enjoy it there. On the men's side, there was absolutely no surprise at all. <laughs> Matt Fraser is like a tin of Ron Seal. It does exactly what it says on the tin. It does exactly what it says on the tin. He had a 102 point lead going into the final event, so he didn't even have to do the final event. After winning event one, and then taking a ninth and an eighth, before the final event, Fraser won Fraser actually won four of the five events and in the one event that he didn't win, he took a second. So his post the other day saying, now we're taking it to the stadium, he just went in and took it to the stadium. It does exactly what it says on the tin. Finished the final event in style by winning it and what motivated him to win it? You know, the mindset, you know, part of it was, you know, I didn't want to completely coast my way in. Um, but then a good incentive is they put up 30,000 for that one event. So I'll push hard for 30 grand. Kind of crazy, actually, if you if you look at it, the Dubai Fitness Championships for one a one event, thirty thousand dollars. I would have done really good in that event for thirty thousand dollars. I wouldn't have won it, so I wouldn't have got the thirty thousand dollars. But can you? The best thing that we saw in that final event was Matt Fraser. You know, he could have just coasted through it and done pretty well. Like BKG was pushing, Willie Georges was pushing, but we saw Matt Fraser go to a pain cave. Like he didn't look like he was having the best time there and kind of doing his Matt Fraser style of like 90, 95 percent, but can dominate. He went full 100 and along with just kind of proving it at the end, just showing how good he is, it also probably mostly was motivated by money because a lot, like if you are the best in the world and there is $30,000 just there, sitting there, for you to give full 100 in the workout, you're probably gonna do it. Take a second, let's take a second to look at the money, okay? So over the weekend, the Dubai CrossFit Fitness Championships, $50,000 for first place. Matt Fraser takes that. Matt Fraser took seven first place finishes. The final one, earned him $30,000. The other six first place finishes earned him $3,000 each. And then the second place finish earned him $2,000, which is $20,000. So over this weekend, Matt Fraser made himself $100,000 for doing some adult PE. Makes me wish I got into this sport when I was four. But kind of as I've covered before in, in this vlog, it's, it's, it's amazing. Like this sport has gone from something that was kind of like held at a ranch with very little prize money and over the years has turned into where a sanctioned, a a sanctioned event, not even the CrossFit Games itself, a sanctioned event, an athlete can walk away with $100,000 for winning it. 
It's great for us as sports fans. It means that we'll probably get more full-time athletes over the years, but also the level of competitiveness is gonna increase because the money's gonna increase. Also just mean there may be some cheating, but we've seen this year, drugs tests and everything, been catching the bastards out. Watching Matt Fraser this weekend, honestly, there looked like there was no chink in the armor. Mentality was on point. Kind of crazy to watch in the final event, the devil presses were done at 85 pounds in each hand. It wasn't much of a devil press, it was more of a dumbbell burpee into kind of a get it to your shoulders and then shoulder to overhead. Bananas. And the winner of the team, <laughs> And the winner of the teams was Invictus. Why am I super happy about this? Tommy Venus, one of the guys that we got to hang out with when we were in Phoenix, Arizona, we actually stayed at his house. He's just a legend. He's 21, 22 years old. One of the strongest guys I've ever met was in that team. Last year, he narrowly missed out on going to the games for the second time after going in 2017. So I'm just super excited to see him go back on a team. You know what, Dubai, that was a great event to watch. Some people were complaining about the live stream. Honestly, every time I went on, the sound was great, the picture was good. I think the commentary was awesome. The one event that I want to try but also don't want to try is the sprint. The 500 meter ski, the 500 meter row into the 1000 meter bike erg. Remember, these guys that were watching are like the best of the best. This is Street Horner coming off the end of it. And then Phil Heskith with a bit of banter added this bit of music. When your legs don't work like they used to before. Also, a great finish for that event was the Sam Briggs race at the end going across the line. That's the performance we've been waiting on. Uh, Norman wow. Briggs. That'll come to a chip time. Sad news, unfortunately, over the weekend for Laura Horvath as she had to pull out due to a back injury. Apparently, according to the morning chalk up, warming up for the snatch, Chris, her brother, told told the morning chalk up that her back was hurting and that she was in pain. The physio said it was muscular, but she's been taken to the hospital to be checked up and to make sure that there's nothing else there that's wrong. So from Jazz and myself, Laura, we hope you're a speedy recovery and uh, you're still Jazz's woman crush every day. I can guarantee you that. But anyway, pretty crazy weekend. We have our first two individual athletes and our first team going to the CrossFit Games. And when Matt Fraser was asked, is he going to do any more sanctioned events, this was his response. You know, I'll definitely throttle back on training for a little bit. Um, you know, I train with uh, Tia Toomey down in Cookville, and uh, she helped me train for this competition. She's doing Wadapalooza, so I told her I would help her keep training with her up until that. But I'll throttle back. Um, take some time, travel, enjoy, enjoy some off-season. So do you think we'll see you at any other sanctioned events coming up? Yes. Congratulations here. Think of this, you've got your ticket to the game, so there's no pressure. You are the fittest man in the world, and there is cash prizes of up to $100,000 at some of the other big events. Maybe not 100,000, but maybe close. You won't be taking a spot away from anyone else. Would you do the events? I know I would. Being an athlete is, isn't the longest time span of career. Why not go out there and do some fitness and earn some money? Also, he did confirm that he's been training with Tia Claire Toomey and she will be at the Waterpalooza. Those two as a training partner, it's just the, it must be the most insane training to watch. Just move well, look cool. But as Briggs said, and as Matt Fraser said, they're gonna both throttle back a little bit on training now, have a little bit of an off season, let their bodies kind of recover and rejuvenate, and then they're gonna hit prep, obviously up towards the games. But now, they are the only two athletes that can really do that. Everyone else's training still has to be at a level where if they're going for a sanctioned event, they may be in an off season now, but they're gonna have to peak for it before then coming down after it to then re-peak for the games. Got a whole year to prepare. So I can't wait to see Sam Briggs and Matt Fraser at the CrossFit Games and see what level they're gonna be on. Another news, my friends just sent me a picture of uh, the ribs that they're having tonight and they just look insane. Think of my mouth water. Look at them ribs. Oh, ribs are one of my favorite foods. I can tell you that. Like, out of all the foods, when you get a good set of ribs, can't beat them. In other news, Patrick Vellner gets picked up by an Uber driver and gets told to get in the back, does it without any hesitation. And Cody Anderson does a 160 kilo really high bar back squat. Might start calling it that myself. Also over the last couple of days, have you seen that Nike have released the Christmas edition of the Metcons? They do look insane, I still hate Metcons. Than the most uncomfortable rigid shoe in the world. You know what, I'd rather do CrossFit in flip-flops, or as Australians call it, thongs. Which is kind of strange, because if you said I want a pair of thongs in the UK as a male, 
get some funny looks. At the box this morning, one of the guys said, have you seen the guy that did the Fiffle under? Five rotations of a double under. He did one, but five rotations. If you could do six, anyone send me that video. That'd be cool. And another news, Tia Claire Toomey announced the other day that she's gonna be doing more videos and putting some vlogs out there on YouTube. I'll link her YouTube channel down below in the description, but obviously do go over to her Instagram profile, put down below things like eating or whatever you wanna see. Shane and Tia, two genuine down to earth people that just, I think if they made a vlog, it would be insane. But anyway, thanks for tuning in on today's kind of update video. I did it super quick after it just finished because I thought it was super cool. Super cool. And uh, yeah, tomorrow the vlogs kind of recommence. So we'll see you in Australia. Jet lag not that bad this time around. We went to bed at like 6.50 p.m. yesterday. Kind of cool after Hernandez. Um, sick content. Didn't even film it, I was that tired. Right, it's now. It's now 5.58 in the evening for me. I'm gonna edit this and then I'll probably be in bed by 6.50 again. Oh, I'll live in the life. Smash that like button. I really appreciate it when you smash the like button, team. You guys are the best. See you tomorrow.